But we have to send a clear message. Just because your child gets across the border, that doesn't mean the child gets to stay. So we don't want to send a message that is contrary to uh, our laws or will encourage more children to make that dangerous journey. I'm with her now. Donald Cheeto Drumpf Hitler is literally down at the border, ripping apart families by hand and locking precious babies in dog kennels for fun. Of course, none of that is really true, but that's what the left-wing media would like for you to believe. Take a look at some of the outrage from Blue Check Twitter this week over the so-called child separation at the border crisis. It's ugly to be separated from your kids without knowing what is going to become of them. Many times what we do is for the good of our children, but you really have to think about it. Because you suffer a lot on the journey here. And you think that it's over when you get here. But once you are detained here, that's where the most painful part of the... The lying media would have you believe that the Trump administration's policy to detain family members separately is the cruelest thing ever. In fact, in the words of the former head of the NSA, it's just like what Hitler did at Auschwitz. Remember in that Ben Shapiro video where we talked about how invoking Hitler or the Third Reich is a tactic that people only resort to when they know they're losing an argument? Same principle applies here. Anyways, the media frenzy and outrage manufacturing machine has been firing on all cylinders, and those that run the media are desperate to turn the routine border detentions into the scandal that brings down the Trump administration. Of course, that's not going to work. Most people actually support this, and in this video, I'll explain why that is. There are several different layers of conservative response to the so-called child separation crisis. The first layer of response is something I'm seeing from more moderate conservatives. Their initial response is to cave to the left's morality and agree that yes, the photos of children in detention centers are horrible, but they were all taken in 2014 under the Obama admin, so it really isn't Trump's fault after all. This is a bad response because you're letting the left set the framework for morality. You're conceding to their standards and operating under the assumptions from the start. The only debate is how and where you're going to shift the blame to. You're agreeing that enforcement of the U.S.-Mexico border is cruel, and we should be handling the situation more, quote, humanely. Of course, in this context, handling the situation humanely means a complete disregard for law and order and allowing illegal alien migrants to do effectively whatever they want. We wouldn't want to avoid bad optics in the press, right? The next layer of response is quite a bit better, and it's the narrative that myself and Tucker Carlson and others agree with. Family separation is part and parcel of enforcing the border, something that must be done, and it has the potential to act as a powerful deterrent against those that would seek to cross our border illegally. I'll lay out the case for why defending our border is a good, natural, and essential thing, but first, I'm going to lay out the case for why you should be defending your online privacy and protection. It is now summer, which means you're probably thinking about taking some time off from the work site and going on trips or vacations. Unfortunately, those that would steal and misuse your private information are not taking a break for summer. Everything you transmit over a wireless router, whether it's public or private, is subject to being recorded, logged, and archived by entities public and private. The free Wi-Fi at the airport, free Wi-Fi at the restaurant, or free Wi-Fi at your university. None of them are really free, and the price is your privacy, with every site and service you access being logged and watched by someone other than you. That's why I recommend all of my viewers use a VPN, or virtual private network, whenever you go online. So fortunately, my friends at Virtual Shield have built a service that will keep you protected on every device, from your iPhone to your desktop computer, for less than the price of a cup of coffee every month. Virtual Shield's VPN technology keeps you secured and private online, and unlike like those free VPN services, they don't log and sell your browsing data. Plus, with servers across the globe to choose from, you don't have to worry about your connection being slowed or throttled. Regardless of whatever country you're in, you can pick servers worldwide to browse the internet from, something that I know our European friends will appreciate. Visit hidewithjames.com to get Virtual Shield's exclusive summer deal, full-fledged VPN protection for less than $3 a month. For $2.75 a month, you can be protected and secure online. At this point, there's no reason not to have it. Visit the website and get protected today. Threats will always be out there, but this deal won't last forever. All right, now back to the border. There are a variety of reasons why it's smart security for children to be separated from their parents at the border. Number one, it helps prevent child smuggling. Unfortunately, many people in the world are liars, and many people across the third world see the total disaster on the American southern border as an opportunity to cheat our system, take advantage of our laws, and come across the border by any duplicitous means necessary even if it involves child smuggling. I'm a young guy, but I'm not too young to remember the border story that captured the nation by storm just four years ago. 
this time four summers ago. Migrant children being smuggled across the Mexican desert and end up at the U.S. border, where they would cross, unaccompanied, into the U.S. Between October 2013 and July 2014, 57,000 unaccompanied illegal immigrant children were apprehended in South Texas alone. 57,000. That's like twice the enrollment of the college I graduated from. Apprehended over less than a year in one region. This was a big crisis back in 2014, and many were focused on how this phenomenon could be stopped. How could we stop people sending their children unaccompanied across the dangerous U.S.-Mexico border, a border where, according to Amnesty International, 6 in 10 migrant women experience sexual violence of some nature? Well, of course, in order to prevent this from taking place, we need to make it impossible for people to cross the border illegally, and at the same time, build a system that disincentivizes people from doing so, perhaps dissuading some individuals from ever taking the journey in the first place. Of course, the United States is, in many ways, no longer a serious country. We allow the world to take advantage of us, on trade, with our military, and especially on our border. Our country's laws are such a joke that before Trump ended the policy of catch and release, people crossing the border illegally would often be arrested in the U.S. and then released back into the United States and told to show up for court in a few months or a year. Of course, they had no reason to show up in court. They were across the border already because they knew they might get deported if they did show up for court. Before President Trump, our borders were effectively wide open to anybody that wanted to illegally cross because they knew there were almost never any consequences for doing so. Detention was relatively rare. But now, the federal policy is to immediately prosecute everyone caught crossing the border illegally, which means they end up in a federal detention facility of some kind while they wait for their case to be litigated. And naturally, when your parents are in prison, you, as a child, cannot go with them. That's true in America, and it's true for illegal aliens, hence the need for these child detention facilities. Before Trump, most people that crossed the border got the equivalent of a traffic ticket and were told to show up for court, and most of them don't. Now, border crossers are arrested and held until their cases can be decided, at which point they're either granted asylum or deported. Frankly, I don't understand why these people have any rights to American immigration courts at all. They're not Americans. They haven't paid taxes to prop this system up, and they have no constitutional rights. If I were in charge of immigration policy, we would not be spending money on trials and jails. And we wouldn't be separating families either. We'd just be picking them up and shipping them back to Mexico or wherever they came from. I don't mean them any ill will, but they're not welcome in our country. We don't need or want them, and they have to go home. Even experts interviewed by CNN agreed that the immigration court system, where hearings can take place two or three years after an illegal alien's arrest and release back into the U.S., it creates a pull factor that encourages more illegal aliens to cross into the U.S. If they know they're going to be allowed to stay openly in the U.S. and not be arrested, why wouldn't people want to come and cross the border? This brings me back to the point I made at the beginning of the video, creating an incentive structure where people know they will not be rewarded for having children with them when they cross the border illegally. Groups with children that claim to be families previously enjoyed special consideration from immigration authorities. In fact, in 2015, a judge went so far as to rule that parents caught crossing the border illegally that had children with them must be released from federal custody and set free. Talk about clown world. This, of course, created an incentive structure where people considering illegally immigrating to the U.S. knew that if they brought their kids with them, or someone else's kids, they would be given special treatment. And this connects us back to the topic of child trafficking. Giving special treatment to groups with children creates a perverse incentive structure where children become a ticket to ride for smugglers or other illegals looking to gain entry into the U.S. As Senator Tom Cotton tweeted today, quote, The Keep Families Together Act is better called the Child Trafficking Encouragement Act. Show up at the border with a minor and call him your child, then you get released into the U.S. Children will be abducted and sold to drug cartels and slave traders as a free ticket into the U.S., end quote. He's not wrong. In fact, he's exactly right. According to Department of Homeland Security Chair Christian Nielsen, quote, from October 2017 to this February, we have seen a staggering 315% increase in illegal aliens fraudulently using children to pose as family units to gain entry into the country, end quote. According to information relayed by law enforcement sources to the Daily Caller, quote, Officers are increasingly encountering family units of adult males with children of various ages. When law enforcement attempts to debrief the adult males with children, they often cannot answer even the most basic questions about their supposed children. The children also rarely appear to know the details of their apparent fathers. The law enforcement source cast doubt on the asylum claims that many of the illegal immigrants appeared to parrot, pointing out that the vast majority of those detained are actively trying to avoid authorities. 
Only upon their detention do they offer the exact same credible fear of returning home, most of whom say the phrase in the exact same scripted way. The scripted manner of answer indicates to authorities that these illegal immigrants have been coached by human trafficking organizations, end quote. That brings up another good point. If these people are supposed asylum seekers seeking refuge from political violence or gang warfare in their home countries, why are they sneaking across the border and not walking up to the gate and announcing their intent to seek asylum? It's almost as if these asylum seekers are not really asylum seekers at all, but instead are economic migrants that fall back on the asylum seeker excuse in the case they get caught. We need to start getting smart as a country and realize that any policies that demonstrate weakness on the border will be exploited and used against us. This so-called child separation crisis would not be occurring if our country got tough on illegal immigration, built a wall, and made it clear to potential illegal migrants that you will not be welcomed here if you break the laws to get here. No more immigration courts either. Access to American courts is a right for Americans, not everybody in the world that happens to be across our borders. If you apply the legal way, we'll work with you, and maybe we'll let you in and have access to our courts, but if your first act in our country is to break our immigration laws, you have to go back. Keep in mind, as you watch the mainstream media coverage of what these children are going through, they're being held in an air-conditioned environment with toys, TVs, books, beds, three meals a day. They're not being abused or mistreated. The only abuse they're suffering is at the hands of their deadbeat parents that knew what the consequences would be before they brought them here and chose to subject their children to that anyways. These don't sound like good parents to me. Americans shouldn't feel guilt or shame about our laws being enforced. It's not our fault that these people chose to put their kids at risk. We want to deal with them humanely, of course, and we mean them no ill will, but access to our country is not a human right. We're not mistreating them by telling them they have to go home. After all, as the left taught us, their countries are great, beautiful places, and definitely not shitholes, right? Adios, mi amigos, and best of luck back home.